In the previous video, we created the basic structure for a click application and we're able to use the Robinhood API to log in and get a list of quotes for different stock symbols. In this video, we're going to go a little bit further and show you how to buy and sell stocks using the Robinhood API and also how to use optional parameters in Click and also how to display a custom UI using the click.echo function. And so we're going to get started. Um, let's just dive in. Um, I'm going to create another command. We already, we already had the quote and the watch list commands. Um, so we're going to make a couple more commands. Uh, we're going to call one buy and we're going to call one sell. So I'll create the decorator and then I'll create the shell functions here and stub that out. And so you, you see these are part of the click group main. Um, and so we're going to fill those in and think about what we need in order to buy and sell stocks. Now let's look real quickly at the Robin stocks documentation. And you see there's two types of buys you can make when you're buying stocks. You can do a market buy, which will just execute and buy a certain quantity of shares immediately, depending on what the current price is. Uh, and then there's a limit order in which you can specify, I want to buy 100 shares of Apple, for instance, but I only want to buy it at this particular price. So that says I'm going to wait and I'll put the order in the queue and it's only going to get filled if I can get those shares for that price. So this is just putting in a bid at a certain limit price. And then there's market, which just says, you know, get me those shares immediately. I want in. So uh, let's write the buy function uh, to use both of these uh, Robin stocks methods. So I'm going to jump back into PyCharm. And in our buy command, what we're going to do is add some arguments. So the different things we need, let's think about what we need to buy a stock. Uh, I'm going to add some parameters uh, for the function. So what do I want my command to look like? So I'm going to clear the console. And we've been running Python robin.py and the name of the command and passing in the parameters. So let me think, what do I want this to look like? I want it to be like buy. And then I also want to just say 100 Apple, so the quantity and the symbol. And that's if I want to do a market order. It's not defined yet, so you'll get an error. And then what I'll also want to do is be able to specify a limit order. And so in that case, I'll want to use an optional flag for that. So I want that to look like this, dash dash limit. And let's say I only want it by Apple if it falls all the way back down to 100 a share. And if I do that, I want it to place a limit order. So that's going to uh, teach us how to use the click option uh, decorator. So let's go ahead and add those decorators now and, and uh, write this function. So I'll write a little help string here to just say uh, buy stocks. Um, buy quantity of stocks. And that'll be my help command, my help string. And then I'll add the options I need. So I'll do click.argument since I just want a required argument. And then the first position will be the quantity. And one new part of click we'll use in this program is we can use types. So a quantity is going to be a number. So we can say type equals click dot. And you'll see here there's a variety of data types if we want it to be an int, a string, or a UUID or date time, things like that. So we want to make sure this is an integer, otherwise it'll fail. And then we also want another argument, that's the symbol. And that'll be a type string. And then we also want an optional parameter. And the difference between an argument and an option is that this is optional, and we also need to uh, give it an, an optional flag. So I'll do click.option, and we'll do uh, limit. So we'll say limit, and the limit has to be, in this case, uh, our price can be a decimal number. So we'll do click.float here to make sure uh, it's a decimal. Um, and then for buy, these parameters are going to come into our function, and they'll be called quantity, symbol, and limit. Okay. And then, so let's just make sure this function works. Again, we're just going to print out uh, what this does. Uh, so instead of just a normal print that we've been doing, now we're going to transition to uh, using click.echo. And what this lets you do is uh, it gives a cross-platform uh, way of printing to all the terminals. 
uh, and that works with Python 2 and 3, and also lets you do things like style the color of the output and do some interesting things in our terminal. And so we're going to take advantage of this now, and we'll convert all these print statements to using click.echo. So let's try this out and see what it does. So on our buy here, uh, we're just going to print out the parameters we, we, we received. So let's do click.echo and see what that does. So click.echo will say um, buying some quantity of some symbol at some limit price. And we'll use our dot format like we did in the past and just pass it in the positional arguments. So symbol and then limit. And let's see if that works. So buy 100 Apple. And it says buying 100 of Apple at none because we didn't pass it a limit and it was optional. And then now I can do dash dash limit and do at 100 a share. And you'll see it'll say buying 100 of Apple at 100 a share. And then also let's let's just type and make sure we can see our help command. So you see buy is buy quantity of socks and then sell. We can also fill that in while we're at it and then sell quantity of stock, stock by symbol. Buy quantity of stock by symbol. Okay, that makes our help text filled in and we have these commands available to us now. So echo isn't that different from print now, but let's try something new, and then we'll use click.style, and that lets us wrap this entire bit of text, um, and then it accepts some other uh, parameters at this point, some keyword arguments. And so I can do fg equals and give it a color. So watch, I'll do fg equals green, and now if I run it, It'll print as green on the screen. And I can even do bold equals true. And you can save the documentation to see what else is possible there. But you see this has a, a bold color. And then you can also do BG equals, uh, let's say we want the background to be uh, blue. That'll probably look ugly. Yeah, so you can't really read it now. So black was a pretty good color. Uh, let's see how that looks. Gray is an unknown color. And so we can experiment with those those options. So that wasn't a good option there. So we're just gonna leave the background out for now. I like how green text looks on the back, back black background. And I like that it's bolded a little bit. So that looks good. And then the next thing you'll see is that we're using print and all of these other functions up here. But really I would like to use this click echo and then use the green color here for any successful transactions. So I wanna convert all these print uh, functions here to to uh, displaying in this format and I don't also don't want to type click dot echo click dot style and so forth so why don't we just uh, abstract this out a little bit and let's just create a new file and we'll call it ui.py and this will just be uh, have a function and just helper functions for displaying our terminal UI and we can just add to this as we go so I'll just do a regular Python function and say uh, success and that'll just take the message and then it'll handle um, all of the extra processing for us. So I'll just copy from robin.py, copy this into ui.py. Instead of writing all this, uh, this will do all the work for us. And then we just pass in this part. So it accepts the message. You still have to format your string, but all this part's hap happening for us. And then in robin.py, I can uh, import UI which I just created. That's this local package here. And then instead of this, I can just do ui.success. And then I don't have to worry about all of the, the formatting there. And then same here, I can do, uh, I'll just delete that. I don't need that debug message right now. And then I'll just do ui.success here. And then on my uh, watch list quotes, I can do UI success there. And so now we, we're displaying our uh, output in a consistent way using our one helper function. And we can even add on to this. One thing I thought would be cool, we can have like an error message, right? And then that would be red. So we can copy this up here. And so let's say we wanna display some errors. We can just do UI.error and make that red. And also it'd be cool to kind of, since we're printing like tabular 
uh, output, like a table. Uh, maybe we want something this print, prints like like a bar. So instead of a message, uh, we just want a shortcut to just go pr print some headers or something. So like ui.bar, for instance. And it would just uh, print a bunch of uh, minus signs or equal signs. And maybe we can even make that uh, a parameter that says the type of uh, symbol we want to use here. So we can make a bunch of helper functions to do whatever we want. So we'll make this UI more sophisticated over time. I just wanted to, to divide out some of that code. So uh, we got that. We have our bar command. Uh, so yeah, let's actually execute a buy now. Um, so you see we have that optional limit parameter. And we saw that limit was none whenever uh, I didn't pass in the optional parameter. And we also know the two functions we have available to do a buy market and buy limit order. And so, yeah, let's use those. So we already have our login function that executes in main here. So we should be authenticated. And I'm already logged into a Robinhood account just to show you that this actually works. So let's go ahead and use this optional parameter. So let's say if limit is not none, that means you know we got a limit order. Else it's a market order. Okay, so we'll move that in there, move this in here. And so the market order will be here at market price. And we can use RH and let's see, order by limit. And then our result, our response or whatever you wanna call it. Let's call it result equals order by limit. And the limit by has symbol, quantity and price. It's a little different than the order of the parameters here, uh, but I like this order for command line purposes. So uh, we have to pass symbol, quantity, and price. So we'll do symbol, quantity, and then limit, which is the limit that was passed in, get result. And likewise here, we can do rh.order by market. And this one, we just need a symbol and a quantity. So symbol and quantity. Right, and so that's good. And then, yeah, we'll print the result. Not print the result, let's use our function that we made for that. So uh, result, and we'll print it out and see what the result is. So I don't wanna buy 100 shares at $100 of Apple right now because that'd be you know, $10,000 and I don't wanna do that in a video. So I'll just set my limit really low to five cents and Apple will never be five cents so we're safe here on our limit order. It'll just stay in the queue. Uh, if it does execute, I'll be very happy. So I'm gonna run that. And it says buying 100 shares of Apple at five cents. And then we have an error. So we wanna make sure this works. So let's fix this uh, dot join bits. Uh, expected string and a dict found. Okay, so that's another thing. Um, our result here, um, I think it's actually a dictionary and we're trying to print out a string. So in our in our helper functions here, uh, we'll just go ahead and cast the message to a string. And so whatever we send here, it'll stringify it and display it. So let's try that one more time. Limit five cents. And it said, I can only purchase seven shares for Apple. So that's great. We have a message as well. And so we can use that to display an error. Um, and so the reason why that happens, right, is because I'm logged into a Robinhood account to test this out. And you'll see, since I'm just doing a sample video, I'm not putting a lot of money in, in here. So I have a test account that has 36 cents. So we can't afford, we can't afford that much Apple right now. But what we can do is say we can buy seven shares of Apple at five cents each. And so if I just say I want seven shares, or let's just do five shares at five cents, do that and you see right there, it actually went through. And so now we have an actual transaction time. We have an ID to refer to that particular trade. And you can see uh, a lot of information here. That means this actually uh, was placed and it also has a status. Um, so buy side and that looks great. And so now I'm gonna check this actual Robinhood account here. And if I refresh this page on Apple, you'll see here on the history, there's a limit buy right here that's queued up and it's actually executed in Robinhood. 
but yeah, it hasn't happened because Apple's not going to hit five cents. But yeah, you can see we're placing a real buy order from the command line here. Uh, the market's closed right now, but you know this is good to go and ready to go if Apple ever drops back to five cents. Okay, so that's awesome. And then now uh, we can also do a market order, and that would work uh, the same way if we left off this. And I'll say buy five shares of Apple at market price. And see, I only have 36 cents, so I can't even afford it. So that looks great. We have an easy way to issue a buy. And now let's switch over to the sell side. This should be very easy since we just did this. And it's the same exact thing. I can even copy uh, the same parameters and do uh, quantity symbol and limit and do the same deal. So, but instead of order buy limit, I believe we have an order sell limit and order sell market. And we just change these messages over to selling. And let's see if that works. So I'm gonna sell five shares of Apple. Selling five shares at market price. We got a message saying not enough details, not enough shares to sell. So let's just say since uh, result detail seems to be how it sends the message back. Uh, so let's just say if result detail. How about if detail is in the, the dictionary. If detail and result, we do UI error message. Uh, UI dot error result. And otherwise it's a success. So we'll do otherwise UI success result. And then now you see, we use our UI function that displays a red message saying it didn't work. Uh, so uh, that's good. Uh, I don't quite trust putting detail in there, so I want to switch that around. Let's let's see what it has here. So ref ID seems to be how they refer to a specific buy or sell order. So why don't we just say if ref I, ref ID is in result, then we know we actually have an order. So we'll do success there. Otherwise, error. Okay. And we can do the same thing up top. Same exact function here. Uh, we can probably divide this up into uh, a function that eliminates this repetition, but I wanna play with some other commands to make sure we have the most flexible way of doing that first. So for now, we'll do this repetition. So we have a way to buy and issue a sell order now. And we see this went in like a real trade into the Robinhood history. And if I go check my email even, um, you'll see that I got a notification and that you know they received my order and it's ready to go. Okay, uh, that's enough for this video. I just wanted to make something working and show you how to do optional parameters and how to use a formatted output uh, using click and how to actually use the buy and sell functions. Uh, in the next video, we'll get in more detail and we will uh, look into uh, printing out our holdings, maybe see what positions we currently have open, uh, looking at our transaction history so that maybe we can parse through our Robinhood's trading history. And also I'd like to do some things like uh, do some option chain, like look up the option chain for particular stocks so that we can buy options for our uh, stock tickers uh, that expire on a particular date. And then uh, also we might explore some of the crypto functionality. So I'd like to try that out as well. But for now, this is a good uh, deliverable and we can stop here and tune in to the next video.